Hey PC World fans, we're here live at CES 2024 with Brad Chargas. Hello. But most importantly, we have maybe the most important person at CES 2024. Not true, not true. Tom not Peterson true. Thank from you very much. Thank Intel. You. Amazing introduction. So, so, <laughs> so excited to have you here. We're going to run through a list uh, of topics for Intel graphics related, but let's start to look back at ARC. The, the discrete GPUs have been out for a while. You got four models on the market now, yep. and a ton of updates. They have come out hot and heavy over the past oh year. Oh my gosh, I don't know how many updates we've had. You, it's, it seems like it's maybe once a month, maybe? It, it is a lot of updates, More than that. and a lot, a lot of improvements. Obviously, Keith has, has done some coverage you know, yeah. of, of checking in monthly, yeah. and, and at some point we're like, all right, well, it just keeps getting better. It does. Uh, but there's also been you know, a couple stumbling blocks, like there with... DX9 uh, initially, and yeah, maybe a little yeah. bit of DX11. Well, and, you know, and Starfield, I mean. So, oh yeah, Starfield, yeah. Yeah. Oh right. wow, So wow. You, I, I, you I, go right I there. I know, I'm you sorry. Right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, so it, it's still learning, it's still a work yeah, in progress. Yeah. Where do you see ARC continuing with the, the uh, desktop? I would say no. uh, when we launched ARC, uh, I even did a video and said, listen, this is going to be a long process and we're going to be working on drivers and driver updates forever. And, you know, we are, we have, but the progress has been incredible. Our driver team, you know, they took it, they took it and they internalized it and they got better quickly. We fixed DX9, we improved DX11, we're kicking it on new titles. And if you look at ARC performance today, Alchemist specifically, it's night and day versus launch. So I'm very, very excited with the progress. But I, I think I, it really goes back to the engineers and our dev tech team, mm -hmm. right? Because you have to be intercepting these new titles and do driver updates to get everything perfect at the day of launch. And so far, uh, the team really gets it. I believe you guys have been putting out day one game updates faster than the competition. Uh, well, you know, I don't want to. I, I think it's it's all it's you know it's a battle. Yes. Everybody wants to be ready. We call it day zero. Day zero. So we man. are when the game launches, we already have a driver out, yeah. and that is a massive effort of QA driver engineers working on it. And there's usually tuning that we can do per title. Yeah. So it's a huge effort to get early builds to start looking at it, doing the detailed engineering work. But I'm pretty excited with the progress the team's made. Yeah. So the, uh, speaking of the cards that are out right now, yes. one of the things I noticed is that, hey, the limited edition ones have run up to the limited. Uh, <laughs> we have run yeah. almost, we're not totally out, but oh, okay. we are almost out. And, okay. and that's both good and bad because they were awesome. I mean, if you got yeah. a limited edition card, you got a deal. Because they look they, good too. Yeah, they yeah. look good, they have great thermals, they are over-designed. Yeah. And now as performance has been creeping up, they're just an incredible value. Um, and I'm really excited though to see our partners step in. So the volumes available are continuing to ramp. There's worldwide availability. I mean, it is a massive effort to enter the graphics market. And it takes, it takes a lot of partnerships. And it's just starting to be the case where those can drive the volume that we need. Will, will the limited edition come back? Do you think if there's a demand for it? I think there is a demand for it. Yeah. Um, but the truth is it's really difficult economically to justify that once the partners have ramped their volume. Yeah. But okay. you know, I never say never. There's, there's lots of uh, innovation that we want to do yeah. on the graphics card business and graphics card market. And the limited edition idea is the way that we can show the, the, the leadership role there. Set the standard. Yeah. yeah, and so I expect you'll see us continue that, that model. Um, but when I say limited edition, you know, it's it should be limited. It should be yeah, it should be limited, right? And that's that's what we're trying to get. Well, at. speaking of partner cards, one of the things I noticed is that for uh, at launch, the A770 limited edition had 16 gigabytes yep. of VRAM, and then the partners had eight. Yep. But now the partners have, have 16, to, yeah. and I had a hard time even buying an eight gigabyte yeah. version. Yeah, it, it's interesting to see how the market has moved in the year that we've been doing this. But now 16 gig is kind of like. I want 16 gig, and it's partly because yeah. of people are doing some, some hobbyist AI, yep. people are doing some creator work, stable diffusion work, and the memory that we provided with the 16 gig SKU, it's, you know, it's found its niche. Yep. Nice, I dig it. Well, then I, I, I want to ask and transition into Meteor Lake, because obviously I know on the back end you've worked a lot uh, at taking what you learned with the Arc Discrete GPUs yeah. and taking it into Meteor Lake. So, so what are some of those lessons that you learned well, there's and so now many. you're seeing them? I think the, the best thing is we have to keep the architecture stable, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. this is very, very similar to our, our, our Arc Alchemist GPU. Mm -hmm. Right, it's a smaller version, but it has the same API, it has the same little quirks that our driver team's been working through over the last couple of years, and now all of that driver work just is available because the API and the architecture is the same. Right, so DX9 out of the box is great, DX11, DX12, all of that work that we've done for Arc mm -hmm. just works on Meteor Lake, which is, it's kind of the plan, right? I mean, yeah. why, people have asked me, why is Intel doing discrete? It's well, because obviously we want to have a real competent graphics business, but also 
inexorably that will transition into our integrated graphics product family. So it's, it's a very complementary investment that is just now starting to pay dividends. And I'm very excited about what Meteor Lake can do because of that, right? Yeah. Technologies like XCSS, our yeah. XE super sampling technology, is running out of the box day zero on Meteor Lake. And if, if you imagine, had we not done discrete, all of those titles would need custom integrations for Meteor Lake, and that's yeah. that's just not the case, right? So it's a super synergistic, um, the you know, plans business. Are starting to come together. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I'm, I'm really glad to be part of it. Yeah. Uh, well, have you had any learnings from working with Meteor Lake that is coming back to the discrete cards? Uh, many. You know, there's uh, Meteor Lake for me is all about, first of all, disaggregation and power management. So if you think about how video playback right now, today on Arc or on any GPU, you have to power up the whole thing. Yep. On Meteor Lake, that's not the case. It's a disaggregated die, and this little die right in the middle is the SOC die, and it's got a dedicated media engine that's been pulled out of the graphics and pulled in in its own tile. So when we're playing media on Meteor Lake, the graphics are off. It's just an SOC uh, e-core and uh, the media block. It's pretty cool. So that idea of islands uh, definitely can uh, come back to discrete. Hmm. Interesting, I never yeah. thought about that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, and I mean, speaking of which, since it is disaggregated, the idea that you can have a, a cut down version for maybe different versions yep. of the uh, core processors. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so, here at CES, you did talk about uh, other yeah, variations we have, we have, of this. So if you look at this guy, uh, like I said, it's got a compute tile with a lot of processors on it. It's got a SOC tile with media and other things, but it also has a graphics tile. And this this uh, particular SKU is for high performance things that we're going to show here. We have another one coming up that's cost reduced, a little bit more of a mainstream processor, but we don't have to redesign the entire SOC. We're just doing a cut of the graphics tile, reducing the core count from eight to four, and we have a brand new product that's market specific, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of changes the economics. And you'll see, I think you'll see more um, specific SOCs to mm -hmm. vertical segments, starting off with mobility, but there's lots of other ways to look at this. Uh, gaming is another idea, right? Yeah. Well, is there a way to expand the GPU tile? So uh, maybe you contract one I of the other know. tiles, the, the uh, key tile? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. 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 There's lots of ideas here. Yeah. I love where your head's at. I love Legos. So like, I look at it and I'm like, ooh, Lego box. I, I think, I think if, if you give me the ability to do market segment specific SKUs, I will literally go crazy. <laughs> like, that's why I don't get to do this. Uh, <laughs> well, speaking of specific markets, one of the markets I'm excited about is handhelds. So we have the, the MSI Claw here running with a, an Intel Core Ultra 7. Very exciting. So so first, tell me about the, the, the work that's been done to say, hey, you know what, we're going to put Meteor Lake inside of a handheld. Well, I got to say, when I first discovered this, I, I found out it's been co-engineered with Intel and MSI. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing the software launcher and stuff. We've helped with some of the thermals and other parts of the board design. Oh, okay. But it's nothing, uh, you know, it's nothing but revolutionary. This is like uh, kind of in the same, there's like this emerging class of devices that you can think of as portable PC gaming. Yep. And the experiences that they give you are pretty spectacular. I mean, Meteor Lake is driving this and you get all the arc goodness, right? You get uh, XESS, you get high performance gaming, low power efficient, and it just makes perfect sense for this category. Is that a stock chip inside of there, or is that a specialized this chip? This is a stock chip. <laughs> yeah, so think of it as Meteor Lake is so power efficient yeah. and so uh, high performant on graphics, it's just a natural mate for this thing. And that's why I'm very excited about, you know, notebooks with gaming based on Meteor Lake. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's that strategy that you've always wondered about, like Intel graphics getting increasingly competent eventually yeah. will disrupt the low-end market for gaming discrete, yep. right? And, and the rate at which that happens is strictly driven by how good does ARC get, how quickly, right? Mm. We're already not seeing an NVIDIA 4050 too often. Yeah, these days, 4050 so. is having a little bit of a bad hair yeah. day, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, you know, we need to do some, some testing to verify, but can you say, like, is the performance of this chip similar, you know, in, in this uh, design? These form factors are very similar. Of course, TDP is going to vary. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and yeah. so on mobile designs, TDP does affect the performance. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I'd say I can't talk about performance on this SKU directly okay, because okay. that's an MSI thing. You should talk got to it, those guys. It. They'll talk about availability, performance, all the rest of it. However, it's based on similar technology. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would expect the performance to be somewhat comparable. Okay. 
So speaking of disaggregation, could you theoretically create custom chips for handhelds like this in the future? Yeah, it just depends on if the market's big enough and if, yeah. the, if, the, if there's a differentiated technology yeah. advantage, for sure, right? Okay. Why, why wouldn't you, you can imagine, I mean, if, for anything that's big enough, yeah. we could do a custom whatever, you know? Okay. And um, yeah. I'm excited as, as things migrate and change, you know, this and this, start looking a little bit more similar, right? You can think yeah. about it, maybe an iPad's like right here in the middle. Yeah. So what, is, what does that look like? Hmm. Uh, well, obviously in the handheld space, there's a, a company that kind of reigns supreme. <coughs> AMD, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> what, why is it important for Intel to get into the space? Because, I mean, you know, AMD's pretty entrenched in there. They do yeah. awesome stuff. Like, why does Intel want to go in there and now try to compete? Uh, on this form factor yeah, specifically? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's now growing to the part where it's big enough, and you can kind of see the trend where this is this is not going to be a, a kind of like a, a love project, a prototype. Yeah, yeah. This is going to grow into a segment that we uh, we can invest in, mm. right? And yeah. I think about all the streaming devices, so it doesn't all have to be local. It, there sure. can definitely be streaming devices, and a streaming device is, again, a great match for Meteor Lake. Yes. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Well, so the, I mean, in terms of handheld, there's so many different variables to, to weigh, right? And I, I know we can talk to MSI, you know, specifically about designing this one, but a lot of it is like power to performance, yeah. and then how that leads to battery life. Yep. There are definitely some out there that are like, hey, you know what, this is performant, but, you know, like- It's it, not it, really it's, mobile. It, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's not really mobile, and, and the battery efficiency is just yeah. gonna be real bad. This thing's light. Oh, yeah, it, it, yeah. No, I mean, I, I love it. I, I like it in the hand. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to, to play with it more, yeah. but yeah, like, what kind of considerations did you have to think about? in order to get this chip in such a small format. I, I, I would say again, let's talk to MSI mostly about that, oh, okay. but okay. we did co-design uh, a lot of work on the thermal stuff. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's about taking the heat, and you can see the venting stuff here mm -hmm. with the fins, that's all new, mm -hmm. right? And it, it's enabling the form factor to be thin, light, and a delightful mobility product. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, one of the things that also makes me think of is that, hey, this is a Meteor Lake chip, it has an NPU in it. It does. There's no other handhelds on the market with yeah. NPU. You know, what can be done with that NPU? A uh, lot. You know, specifically a lot. for so <laughs> these handhelds. Uh, so we are very early days in the NPU, and I, I don't know if you guys have looked at all of our enabling, because the, the NPU is mostly about uh, running low power, mm -hmm. always on kind of applications, maybe facial recognition, gesture recognition. So for a handheld, I mean, I don't know what they're doing yet, but I can easily imagine lots of cool use cases. Different ways of human machine interaction would be yeah. a great one. Gaze recognition would be a great one. Um, gesture recognition would be a great one. So I, I, I think it's still early days. The medium term is game enabled AI, mm -hmm. right? So imagine that maybe it's AI for effects or it's AI for character manipulation or character animation enhancement. I think a great application of AI that we haven't seen yet would be animation augmentation, right? So imagine uh, you do a, there's a lot of shitty animation in games today, right? And no, no, no judgment, but, but imagine that you take a, uh, an AI and you put in relatively crappy animation and you get out lifelike human animation, right? That's free. Very interesting. That's free. <laughs> All right. You're welcome, Epic. I, I, like, I like where you're thinking. I like it. Yeah, yeah so well, he's making notes right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Once again, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get my hands on this one specifically. Uh, but before we wrap it up here, I do you want to look a little forward? Okay. So I, I got a couple forward looking questions. Okay, bring it. The first one is obviously Meteor Lake uh, disaggregated architecture on mobile, bringing Arc to the desktop as well. Like, you're, you have different size different power, yeah. different considerations yeah. when it comes to ARC, uh, ARC integrated discrete? on the, de no, no, on, oh, on, on the desktop, desktop yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, on the desktop okay. CPU. Yeah. 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 So I thought, like, what, what, are, what are the goals? Because obviously on a desktop, you can get a discrete, yeah. discrete card. Yeah. You know, is, is it more like, hey, you know, uh, the Meteor Lake or, or low power ARC, like that's on a, a, a tile-based system like this is, is meant more for laptops where on the yeah. desktop, you know, maybe I, it's I see not what needed. You're so to me, to me, it's like, Disaggregation has, in my mind, two or three main benefits. Yeah. One is just economics. You can build SOCs more cost effectively because you can target different IPs to specific technologies. And you can get more chips in your latest technology and you can use your older process technologies for pieces that are less important or less performant, right? So that's yeah. one benefit. And of course you have to get the packaging cost right as well. And this is a uh, I'd say an emerging technology that we're going to continue to invest in. So that's number one. But number two is you can build things that you couldn't build before. 
right? So some things that you can build are things like Ponte Vecchio. So if you're familiar with Ponte Vecchio, it's a massive multi-tile GPU, and it's powering supercomputers, mm -hmm. right? So, so now you've got something that's disaggregated that's in a mobile form factor. You've got something that's disaggregated that's in a supercomputer. There's obviously a continuum here that has not been fully explored, and, and I can't obviously talk about exactly what we're going to do here or if we're ever going to do anything there, but I can definitely see others are doing things like that. Would it be possible using the disaggregated tiles to put, like, say, the AV1 encoding engine onto its own separate uh, tile? Yeah, absolutely, like that? and Brad, we're doing that already with Meteor Lake. So yes. the so the AV1 engine has been moved out of the out of the GCD, which is the graphics tile, yeah. and it's into the SOC tile, and we save about you know uh, 120 mill milliwatts during uh, AV1 playback by doing that. Mm. That could make for some pretty interesting custom desktop chips. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Well, also, I mean, one of the things as a, a video editor, uh, being able to use the Intel QuickSync uh, is definitely big. So, yeah. you know, if I'm thinking, yeah. I'm like, oh, wow, you know, arc, arc on a desktop chip, and you get some really good in, uh, uh, QuickSync performance. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it definitely benefits my workload. It could be so. very cool. Yeah, I'm excited could, about could it. I mean, there's so, cool. so many good things are happening right now. Yes. The, now that the, we've got the basics covered, it's time to start, I'd say, accelerating the business. All right, well, let's accelerate into brat battle mage, Ooh, oh, shall we? Oh, oh, yes, <laughs> yeah, we definitely yeah. should talk so, about okay, things so I can't talk the, about. So give me the pricing, yeah. the availability, so I, I'd like to make all a, the partner a, cards. I'm going to go ahead and, you, no, I can't talk about <laughs> oh, pricing, I, I availability, partner cards. Yeah, we tried. But I can say. But it's still coming out. It's coming. And okay. I'm excited about it. And all our engineers, you know how they are constantly, busily, you know, doing their engineer things? Uh, I'd say about <laughs> 30 30% of our engineers are working on BattleMage, mostly on the software side, because the hardware group is on to the next thing. Yeah, right? it's been set still yeah. So think of it as BattleMage has already had its first silicon in the lab, which is very exciting. And there's more good news coming, but I can't talk about it right now. Okay, okay, so. You're gonna make yeah. us come to next CES too, aren't you? Yeah, well, <laughs> well I hope we're gonna see you before then, but you can, don't take my word yeah. for it now. Yeah. Okay, all right, well, yeah. yeah, well, I'm personally excited to see, you know, that, that, that through line, yeah. that growth, yeah. and where it takes us. And obviously, I'm very excited about handheld. This is super so, cool. Yeah, th thank you for talking to us about the handheld Absolutely. and all the arc stuff. Uh, super excited. Always love talking with you, Tom. It's uh, great to see yeah, you. I appreciate it. Brad in the person. I exist. In he's life. not a digital. He's not an avatar. <laughs> Unbelievable. That you know of. That you know of. All the people out there don't know. He's yet. real. Yeah. He's real. <laughs> uh, Tom can confirm it. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more awesome videos out of CES 2024 here on the PC World Channel. We'll see you in the next one. Yeah.